Good morning, everybody. It is an honor and a blessing to get to share God's Word with you one more time. Hope that you had a good week, and I hope that you know how much God loves you. This morning, we're going to look at the last judge that's presented to us in the book of Judges. His name is Samson. He's probably the most well-known of all the judges, and his story takes up four complete chapters. This morning, though, we're only going to look at chapter 13, a chapter that details for us the circumstances of his birth. God's word declares in Judges chapter 13, verse 1. Now the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, so that the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had borne no children. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now therefore be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Would you pray for me, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you for your love and your care. And Father, I just pray that you would extend that love and that, that care to those who are assembled here today and to those who couldn't be here today. And, and Father, I, I pray, Father, that your presence would be felt in our nation, Lord, that people would turn to you and allow you to lead them and guide them. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you would remove distractions from our hearts and our minds so that we might focus on you. I lift up all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we, in, as we uh, near the end of the book of Judges, we are introduced to one of the most colorful characters in the whole Bible, the man named Samson. Even if you ask people who uh, don't know the Bible very well, most of them can tell you that they know that Samson was a man of great strength. And he was. He was given great strength by God. And what is not well known about Samson are the circumstances surrounding his birth. So this morning I want to look at uh, some of the characters involved in the circumstances around his birth. I believe that each of these characters uh, are unique and each of them have a unique purpose. And, and we can learn something from each and every one of them. So let's look at this passage together in a message entitled, People with a Purpose. And the first character that I want us to look at is the promised son. In verses 1 through 3 of chapter 13, we see that once again the people of Israel had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, they had turned from God. They were no longer worshiping Him. They no longer served Him. They were no longer behaving like His people. As a result, judgment fell upon them, and God allowed their longtime enemy, the Philistines, to come in and to rule over them. And God's people were living in a state of bondage because of their sin. It was a bondage that would last a total of 40 years. 40 years outside of the grace and the fellowship of Almighty God. God, being a, a God of mercy and a God of compassion, longs to, to see us reconciled unto Him. He longs for us to be in fellowship with Him. He longs for us, when we're outside of His will, to cry out in repentance. When the people of Israel would finally cry out in repentance, God would send forth a deliverer for them. And the Bible tells us in chapter 13 that the angel of the Lord appeared to a woman who was barren, who had no children, and He promised her that she would conceive and have a son. You have to understand that in that day and in that time, in that particular culture, a lot of emphasis was placed on having children. So for this woman who had not been able to have children, the message from the angel was wonderful news. She would no longer be stigmatized by society. She would no longer feel inferior to others in her circle of friends and family who were able to have children. She would no longer have to deal with the angst and the anxiety that, that accompanies that, that thought that was going through her mind, perhaps, of what's wrong with me? 
What have I done that I cannot have children? In the midst of her barrenness, this angel of the Lord comes and gives her good news. Comes and give her good news. And, and I, I know you know it, and I know you, you're thinking it, but I just got to say it, that God blessed this woman. He did something for her that she could not do for herself. He promised her a son. I want you to know that God longs to bless you in a similar way. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be having babies, but I want you to know that God wants to do things for you that you cannot do for yourself. He wants to give you the ultimate peace, the ultimate joy, the ultimate contentment that a person can experience in life. He longs to give us those things which we cannot provide for ourselves. And that's not just Old Testament theology. The Apostle Paul said it like this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. The angel of the Lord spoke to her, promised her a son, a special child. This promised son was to be a gift from God. And part of the purpose for this child would be that he would bless his father and his mother. But his purpose was not just limited to that, because he would not only bless his father and mother, but he would be a blessing unto the Lord. Look at Judges chapter 13, verse 4. The angel says, Now therefore be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. The angel of the Lord, as he spoke to this woman, he, he cautioned her not to drink any wine or strong drink. He cautioned her not to eat any unclean thing. For this child that she was carrying, this child that she would bring forth, was to be a Nazarite and to live under a Nazarite vow. The Nazarite vow was a vow that a person took voluntarily, uh, generally speaking, in order to dedicate or devote themselves unto God. Usually it's a vow that was taken for a, a specific period of time or a limited period of time at certain seasons within the year. Nazarite vows were observed in the same sense that some people observe Lent and abstain from alcoholic drinks and things of that nature, certain activities during the season of Lent. A, a season, a time in which a person is showing that they are dedicated to the Lord and they're offering their focus and their attention during that time on Him. A person under a Nazarite vow uh, abstained from alcoholic drinks. They abstained from grapes and raisins. They, they could not have their hair cut. They were not allowed to go near any corpse, whether it be an a animal or a human. Doing those types of things was something that would render them ceremonially unclean. And it was important for them to remain clean because the whole purpose of taking a Nazarite vow was in order to devote oneself to God and to show oneself as being devoted to God. So the word Nazarite comes from the Hebrew word Nazir, which means consecrated one or dedicated one. And this child who we would know now as, as Samson, this child's great purpose was to be dedicated unto God before he was ever born. He was created and ordained to be set apart. He was created and ordained to live a life that let other people know that he was devoted and set apart unto God. And that was very important because God desired to use Samson to bless the nation. God wanted Samson to begin the process of delivering his people from the hands of the Philistines. So this child, this promised son, had a very great purpose in his life. His purpose was to bless his parents. His purpose was to be devoted, to be devoted unto God and to bless the nation by letting God use him 
to deliver the nation from the Philistines. As I read this passage, not only do I see the, the purpose of the promised son, but I also see that the parents had a great purpose as well. You know, you read this passage and it's easy to see that Samson's mother had a very serious calling that God had placed upon her. She had a very uh, serious command from God to pay attention to her health during her pregnancy. To pay attention to the things that she ate and she drank and the things that she did. I tell you, that's a calling for all uh, those who are with child to follow closely. It's important what we place into our bodies. But because this child, because Samson was to be under a Nazarite vow, even while he was in his mother's womb, his mother had to observe very closely that very same vow during the course of her pregnancy. That to fail to do so would have jeopardized the ceremonial cleanliness of her son. So she takes the instructions that she receives from the angel of the Lord very seriously. The Bible says in verse 6 that she ran to her husband and tells him of this visit from the angel of the Lord. She tells him that she has been told that she's going to have a baby. She tells him that she's not supposed to eat anything unclean or drink any alcoholic drink or strong beverage because this boy, this child, is to be a Nazarite from the womb. She goes to him and she tells him all of these things. And I love the husband's response. I love what we see in the Bible from him. I love what we don't see in the Bible from him because he does not say when he hears that, that she's going to have a special child and she has to follow certain things and, and she can't be drinking. He doesn't say, woman, sounds like you've been drinking already. Nothing like that. Nothing, nothing condescending, nothing joking, nothing but taking her very seriously. He doesn't act incredulous. He doesn't act doubtful. He does something that most of us husbands need to do a much better job of. He listens to his wife. He believes her. He trusts her. He gives her his full attention while she is talking to him. That's a lesson that, that all of us men would do well to learn and to pay more attention to. He listens to his wife, and then Manoah takes action based upon what his wife has said. The Bible tells us in verse 8, Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom thou hast sent come to us again, that he may teach us what to do for the boy who is to be born. Oh, I love this passage. So many wonderful things. Such good counsel in this passage. I love the fact that this father-to-be, this dad, is engaged in actively listening to his wife. What a wonderful example that is for our children and especially for our sons. I love the fact that the dad is actively involved in the life of his child, this, this one who is to come, this one who's to be born, this promised son from the Lord. He's already praying for that boy before the boy is born. And I love that, that he's praying to God, asking for wisdom so that he can properly raise this child that God has blessed them with. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The only way to know the, the way that the child should go, the only way to know what the course the Lord God has set for them, is to go to the Lord and ask him about that course. Ask him about that direction. Ask him about that path that he has for your child. Manoah asks. The Bible tells us in verse 9 that God listened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again to the woman as she was sitting in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So she ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came the other day has appeared to me. Then Manoah arose and followed his wife. And he came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to the woman? And he said, I am. 
And Manoah said, Now when your words come to pass, what shall be the boy's mode of life and his vocation? So the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Let the woman pay attention to all that I said. She should not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. Let her observe all that I commanded. So Manoah, he, he finds out from his wife that the man has come back, the angel of the Lord. And I hope you don't miss that. The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, that's referring to Christ. That is a pre-incarnate manifestation of Jesus Christ. Manoah asked him his name, and he says, I am. I am. The name for God. I am that I am. Yahweh. Manoah goes to him, asks him his name. He asks him all these questions, and, and he responds. He responds to the questions from Manoah. And I like his response, because I learned from that response, because just like Manoah, I have lots of questions. I want details. I want answers. And there are times when I lift up my voice to the Lord and I ask Him this and I ask Him that and I ask Him to show me more clearly certain things and I ask Him to tell me stuff that I think I need to know about what's going to happen in the future. I want details and I, I ask questions and I don't always get the answers to my questions. I ask and I pray and, and sometimes when I don't get those answers... I wonder if God hears me. I wonder if God is listening. And I like this passage because it, it shows me and it reminds me that just as God listened to the voice of Manoah, I can trust Him to listen to my voice. You can trust Him to listen to your voice. And you can trust that if He heard Manoah's voice, that He will hear your voice too. He's the same yesterday, today, and yes, forever, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Our God listens to our prayers. Our Lord hears our voice. Now, He might not answer all of those questions that we might throw out there before Him. He may not give us every single detail, every single bit of information that we want to know, but we can know this. He hears our prayers. He listens to us. The angel of the Lord didn't give Manoah any new information. He only repeated what he had already said earlier. Manoah and his wife went forth and did the things that God had told them to do. Manoah and his wife had as their purpose to raise up their child in a way which helped that child learn God's plan for them, help God, help them learn what God had in store for them, help that child to learn how to live in a way that honored God. And the instructions they received were pretty simple. Simply to raise Samson in such a way that he was set apart for God, to live a life that designated him that sanctified him, that showed others that he was devoted to the Lord. And if they were going to have their son be set apart, they were going to have to live set apart too. They were going to have to live in such a way that they set an example for their child. You just can't tell a, a, a child to live godly and then go live ungodly before them. If you want your child to do something, if you want it to be ingrained, if you want it to, to set a good foundation, you must live a life that demonstrates the values and the character that you want to be present in their life. If you want your child to be godly, you need to pray for God's strength, God's leadership, God's guidance, so that you can live godly. That purpose of being a godly parent, that purpose of, of raising a child set apart for God, I think that that's the basic purpose of all parents. And I love the fact that Manoah and his wife, both of them took this purpose seriously. Both of them needed each other. And it, and it seems to me that this couple, like most couples, individually had some different strengths. I think Manoah's wife easily grasped 
the big picture. And I think she was ready to go with it and just do what, what she knew that God had called her to do. No questions. Don't need a lot of details. Lord, you told me to do this. This is what I'm going to do. But Manoah was different. He wanted some details. He wanted some information. And in the pursuit of that, in both of them having different gifts, having different strengths, I love the way they interacted together. They continued to pray to the Lord together. They continued to speak to each other with grace and understanding. We don't see them being rude or condescending to one another in this passage. And it seems to me that that, that is something that could have taken place because I tell you, I believe it was probably a stressful time. To, to have wanted a child and gone years without having a child. And now all of a sudden uh, you hear about a promise that one of you has heard from the Lord about having a child. And you're wondering, could it be? Is it so? And all of those things, I think, uh, added some stress to their daily life. And yet in the midst of that stress, they submitted themselves to the Lord and they worked together. They worked together together. And that's a good thing to do because raising kids is not easy. Two are better than one for they have a good return for their labor. Now maybe you're here today, maybe you're listening and you're a single parent. Uh, man, God bless you. I pray for you, for, for you to know His strength, know His peace, know His power, know His presence. Because you have a tough task that God has entrusted to you. And He has entrusted it to you. And anything that He entrusts to you, He will equip you and empower you to do. And if you're in that situation, I, I pray that, that you would partner up and, and reach out and network with the church. Network with the people of God because there are some people who would love to love on you, who would love to help you, who would love to support you and come alongside of you and help you in raising up that blessing from the Lord in a way that gives God honor and glory. There are a lot of people who are willing to be your support network. Reach out. Reach up. Christians should interact with one another with love and kindness and respect. And Christians should reach out and help one another, bearing one another's burdens and thus fulfilling the law of Christ. We talked a little bit about the promised son. We talked about the purpose of the parents. I want to just close just real shortly with talking about the plan for today. As we look at the lives of Samson, as we look at the life of his parents, it's easy to see that God had a, a definite purpose and a specific plan for each of them. And I hope that you know that God has a, a specific plan, a specific purpose for you as well. He has a specific plan and a specific purpose for all of His children. There are particular jobs, particular ministries, particular tasks, particular seasons where we might be somebody's uh, comforter, somebody's teacher, somebody's helper. Where we might come along beside somebody and help them with the things that God has placed in their path. There are specific things He has for all of us to do. And there are some general things, a general purpose that He has for each and every one of us. Now, that general purpose, I believe, helps us to fulfill and do and accomplish all of those specific tasks that He gives to us. And Jesus spoke about that general purpose in the Gospel of John in chapter 15, in verses 5 and verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus tells His disciples, Tells his followers this. I am the vine and you are the branches. And he who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And he goes on from there in verse 8 says, By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And so in doing, prove to be my disciples. Oh, I love that. I love that. God desires that we abide in His Son, Jesus Christ. We abide in Him. We've accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. And we have eternal life. We have a place waiting for us and a purpose of worship and praise in the hereafter. 
But as God's child, as someone redeemed by Christ, we don't just have a purpose and a plan for the hereafter. We have a purpose and a plan in the here and now. And as we abide in Him, He will equip us and empower us and instruct us and help us to fulfill that purpose. He'll help us to know and fulfill that plan. See, just like Samson was created with a purpose, all Christians have a specific purpose that we have been created for. A specific plan that, and a path that God has ordained for us. We have been created to glorify God. We may not live a Nazarite vow, but we are indeed called to live a life that is set apart. We are indeed called to be devoted and dedicated to the Lord. To offer ourselves to Him as a living sacrifice. People should be able to look at the way we live, the way we love, the way we walk, and the way we talk, and know that we belong to the Lord. We have been made and created to glorify God and bear much fruit. And I tell you, I know and I trust that God has a plan and a purpose for you. And I know and I trust that He will tell you what you need to know. He will show to you what you need to do. He might not give you all the details. Manoah didn't get all the details. But he got enough to know how to walk, how to talk what to do that day and the next day. Our Lord will help us. He'll equip us and empower us to be who He's called us to be and to do the things He's called us to do. Would you pray with me, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank You for this day. Lord, we're grateful that we can know and we can trust that You do have a plan and a purpose for each of us. Lord, your, your plan and your purpose starts with that, that desire, Lord, of yours that we would be reconciled to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. That we would turn from our sins and turn to Him and accept Him as our Lord and Savior so that He might equip us and empower us, abide in us so that we can bear much fruit and glorify you. Father, I ask that you help us in that endeavor. Father, I ask that you would help us to love others in a way that gives you honor and glory. To love others in a way that points them towards you. Lord, that you would help us to live in a way where people can tell that we are set apart. Father, we thank you for this day. and We thank you most of all for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.